I'm your host, Sandy Lowries, and up front I'd like to say today that I have a cold and you can hear it and see it, so my apologies for that. Uh, the Good Girl Confessional podcast is the award-winning podcast of the WB40 platform, Women Beyond 40, a platform for women 40, 50, 60 and beyond who want to be seen and heard, and you can check us out at wb40.com. Before I begin today's podcast, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which this podcast is recorded, the Wiradjuri people of the Kulin Nation, and I want to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and pay homage to their long history of storytelling. Today in the podcast, I am talking to Lee Christine. She is a very successful Australian novelist over the age of 60. Her books are incredible. Um, She has written six romantic suspense novels, six no less, Um, but her incredible book, Charlotte Pass, was launched by Ellen and Unwin in 2020, followed by two books in this series, which are, of course, Kraken Back and Dead Horse Gap. This trilogy of books is set in the snowy mountains, the highlands, basically in New South Wales. Um, It's their beautiful book. She calls them the snowy series. Um, It's their beautifully written books. If you like um, suspense, if you like crime, if you like a bit of a cold case, you will absolutely love these books. But more importantly, uh, Lee came in to share her wisdom about how... um, At a later age in life, she switched from being a corporate trainer to deciding to be a writer full-time. This is now her full-time job. She has won so many awards for these books. Charlotte Pass um, was a finalist for the Favourite Romantic Suspense novel um, and also the Australian Romance Readers Awards. The books are beautifully written. The imagery is amazing. She's very well known for taking you to a sense of place. While she's working on a new novel set to come out next year, I am so thrilled to be talking to Lee and her wisdom about how anything is possible regardless of your age. Please welcome to the confessional, Lee Christine. Hey, it's another Sandy here, Sandy Davies. I'm the founder and formulator of Happy Paws Balm for Intimate Dryness. Find us over at happypaws.com.au. That's H-A-P-P-Y-P-A-U-S-E dot com dot A-U. And get some happy on down there. And in the meantime, keep listening to powerhouse Sandy Lowry's on the Good Girl Confessional podcast, where every woman has a story. Hello and welcome to the Good Girl Confessional. Lee, how are you? I'm very well, Sandy. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm very well and um, I'm super excited to be chatting with you today um, about your incredible books and, you know, how you went from a corporate world into turning writing into a full-time job, which is kind of fascinating to me. So tell us all about you, Lee, for those that haven't yet read your amazing trilogy. um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm 63, so how far back do you want to go? I love that. (laughs) I can can give you a summary, uh, probably is the best thing. Um, I was one of those uh, teenagers uh, when I was in year 12 who had no idea what I wanted to do. I was young for year 12, I was 17, and um, I would have really benefited from a gap year, but we didn't do it back in those days. And um, and so I did, you know, I got into uni, I didn't go, I turned it all down, and um, I didn't want to be a nurse, didn't want to be a teacher, and so my father said, well, you better go to business college and learn shorthand and typing. So that's what I did. And I could take shorthand at 110 words a minute and type at 60 words a minute on a manual typewriter in those days. Little did I know back then that how those skills would stand me in good stead over the decades. It's probably one of the most useful things that I ever did. Um, So I actually got um, started working for a lawyer Um, and I I think I worked for him for about seven years and then I met my husband on a house settlement of all things. Um, He was a law student and we got married in 1982. Um, 
I think he started his own practice and I think it basically he rendered me unemployable, I think, at, in a place like Newcastle back in those days. Um, it was a very small um, a sort of cohort of, of lawyers who all knew one another and I didn't feel comfortable working in another legal office um, with all the private, you know, things that you're dealing with. So I... I went back and did my teacher training and I started teaching at the TAFE because when he'd been at the College of Law, I had worked for the first two Japanese that set up NEC in St. Leonard's and we were unpacking a lot of their first PCs and it was just at the time when um, desktops were being put into households. You know, we'd been using them in offices for a few years, but they weren't People didn't have them in their home. So when I came back to Newcastle and my husband set up his business, um, people didn't know how to use them. And there was this real fear, uh, particularly among um, uh, parents, young parents at schools and things things like that, that, were, you know, their children had to learn how to use computers and they didn't have any idea. So that was my shift into <clears throat> teaching and into the corporate world because I started teaching at TAFE and I was teaching, I started out teaching <clears throat> a word processing certificate for 12 months and then I started teaching. They asked me, did I want to teach legal studies because of, you know, all the my history in that subject um, from time to time I was working as my husband's practice manager in there when we were short staffed and when someone had to leave so I was juggling all these things and then I had two children <laughs> as we did um, and uh, and then after that I I went back and started I got an, uh, had a job offer to um, to actually f start teaching in a corporate sense so I I trained Energy Australia on site for three months uh, for their redundancy um, <laughs> package. Retraining on computers was part of that. So I moved into that sort of, um, you know, workplace. And uh, I think through the 90s, I probably trained so many people in Newcastle. They still come up to me and say, you know, you taught me at TAFE or you, I, you taught me up at Forsyth's, you know, when I did this corporate you know you taught me ms dos or something like that <laughs> think back and so i did have all these very left-brained jobs but the urge to write was always there and that had come out as a teenager when i was in a band a sort of soft rock band that was playing around the place and um <clears throat> and i was you know writing songs so it's very hard to challenging to write tell a story in a song so that was good training and so I think it went all the way back to there. My urge to write was there from wait, this very early <laughs> I love this, but wait a minute. Let's go back to you were in a soft rock band. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the name of the band? The band was called Harmony and we, um, we actually cut an LP record when we were in high school and appeared on NBN Channel 3 when John Williamson was hosting um, his TV show called Travelling Out West, and that was before he was a big name. That was before he was a national treasure. Wow. And, uh, and so we had lots of fun and we were just playing around the clubs and some pubs in Newcastle, some surf clubs and things like that. And um, And that was at that time that I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. And, yeah. <laughs> And um, wow, what was the name of the of the single? Oh, the, <laughs> no, they were all oh my single. Oh, there was one. Um, mine was called. Um, oh, jeez, I've got the record here, <laughs> and I can't even remember what mine was called. There was, oh, there was a girl, a girl Debbie Mason. Um, she's still a professional singer around Newcastle and does weddings and everything. Um, but this, it was just that the LP was called Harmony and I can't remember for the life of me what yeah. mine was called, but it was it was about like living in teepees and it was a very Cat Stevens kind of a song, <laughs> you know, like a wigwam and things and, and all of that. And uh, it was, I'll have to go and, and dig it out. Look, honestly, my memory just fails me. 
Oh, you know what, Lee? I love this because, um, you know, obviously I host this podcast and I love it, but I also am the co-host on a second podcast called Alex the Seal, which is a play on Our Lips Are Sealed by the Go-Go's. And, um, oh, the Go-Go's. And it's uh, yeah. obviously it's a, we talk about the music of the 70s and 80s and the music that shaped us and um, so I am absolutely loving that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have tickets to see Belinda Carlisle. Oh, um, in fabulous. November, she's coming here. That's so wonderful. And I've seen yeah, her about three times she's, before. She's, yep, she's incredible. And um, our, the name, obviously, Alex Cecile, is misheard lyrics and lyrics that people get wrong um, over the years. That's where <laughs> it came from. But um, we love it. So my co-host, Joe Pibus, and I, um, she's a Canberra girl. We um, we love that podcast. So I'm always fascinated when people tell me that they've been in a band or they've written music. Writing yes. music is hard. Oh, it is, and um, and it is very difficult to tell a story. You know, it's like poetry. Um, but uh, NBN here, uh, I think they're digitising all their old, um, all their old um, uh, old footage, and so I, I'm trying to get a a copy of that appearance on Travelling Out West. Um, I'm going to try, and That's it's exciting. way back in. You know, I said it would be seventy six. I think. 75 yeah a long time ago oh I love that but I do love that um you said it was very like Cat Stevens like (laughs) I love Cat Stevens I have to say yeah (laughs) yeah so it was very sort of very you know toe thongs leather toe thongs and sort of caftans (laughs) it was that everyone sitting around in that that sort of folk folky sort of time it was uh yeah it was a great time great decade the 70s Oh, yeah. Wow. So, like, you know, Joe very much is madly in love with all the 70s music and, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm very, I'm just a tragic for 80s music and uh, I love it. So it kind of all comes together and it works. But it's fascinating how music can, you know, form a memory and it changes, it, it shapes us, doesn't it? I mean, I think back to moments in my life and the music that is the soundtrack of my life, if you like. Oh, absolutely. Yes, it, it it definitely does give you the soundtrack to your life, doesn't it? And it can transport you back no matter where oh, yeah. you were. And it's a universal oh. language music. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's global and, mm. you know, it brings people together in a way that, you know, it's so lovely. Um I, I love that you go on to do corporate training because uh, I was also a corporate trainer for a while there and uh, did, you know, facilitation and, and headed up a, a training team, as you do. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me all about that experience and, you know, the shift, I guess, from that corporate world into deciding. Was it, a, was it really a decision or, or how did you move from this corporate space into this writing space? Yeah, look, the um, the corporate training, again, like the shorthand and typing, was just another skill. You know, getting up in, in front of a classroom full of people and um, teaching them and it sort of imparting, you know, what you know about it was mainly um, corporate training was computer packages, application software that I was teaching. Um, and there was a lot of resistance at that time. People felt very threatened. They had to change, um, you know, their working life. And there was a lot of resistance, particularly from a lot of males. They would come in very defensive. I don't have to, you know, don't, they didn't you know, they want their um, masculinity threatened, I don't think, by, you know, admitting that they didn't know something and that they had to, had to retrain. It was very confronting for a lot of people. So um, that was really good training for me too. And, uh, and again, I think I really enjoyed it at the end of the, you know, the time that, um, you know, I spent at Energy Australia, for instance, um, those people, again, were very, were going through um, a, a restructure and some of them were taking redundancy. And again, you know, they were very nervous and about what the future held for them. So just all of those things, I got a lot out of that um, and a lot of satisfaction 
Um, with that job. Hello, Sandy here from the Good Girl Confessional Podcast. The Good Girl Confessional Podcast is proudly brought to us by WB40, a platform for women 40, 50, 60 and beyond. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see the rest of the video, please head over to WB40.com and subscribe to WB40 Extra. By subscribing to WB40 Extra, you're helping to support Support the hard won wisdom of incredible women. So, thank you. Please remember to like, share, and follow.